social distancing and the windows are open to maintain good ventilation. There are speakers throughout the room to help with the increase background noise. If you are invited to speak, please use the microphone if one has been fighted or walk to the nearest microphone. Stand situated on the left, left hand, right hand side of the room. Please can I ask members and officers to introduce themselves when speaking, not to touch the microphone, but to stand close when talking into it. Be mindful of social distancing requirements during and after the meeting, and also to scan the location's QR codes for track and trace. I would like to ask that everyone turns their microphones to silent mode. We are not expecting a fire drill this evening, so if the alarm sounds, please remain calm and follow the instructions of the town hall staff. Please note, there is no opportunity for members of the press and public to speak or address elected members during the meeting. Any placards or signs being held should not cause a disruption to the meeting or burst the views or obstruct the views of others. And please note, there is CCTV in operation at this location. Before moving to item one on the agenda, I move that item eight changes to the Council Constitution paragraph five, new protocols is deferred, deferred to a future meeting of the council to allow members more time to consider it. May I have a seconder to this proposal? Um, council can second. Is that agreed by council? Is that agreed? Thank you very much indeed. Moving to item one on your agenda, apologies of absence. I have received apologies for absence for this evening's meeting from Councillors Umla Gandagaran, Councillor Riaz Mirza, Tamina Rahman, Delphine Tahura, and Tony Wilson. Also, Aisha Chowdhury, Aisha Siddiqui, Patrick Murphy, Councillor Susan Masters, and Councillor Steve Brayshaw. I have also received apologies for absence on behalf of the Council's Chief Executive, Althea Loderick. And I'd like to welcome to the, the dais Jessica Crow, the Council's Corporate Director of People, Policy and Performance, who is with us tonight as Acting Chief Executive. Are there any other apologies? Chair, I have apologies. I couldn't very much. attend Noted. in person. Yeah. Thank you. Any more? Chair. Are there any members wishing to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests or personal or prejudicial interests they may have in any matter which is to be considered at this meeting? I take it that's none. Item three, minutes of the last meeting. I move as a correct record, the minutes of the last ordinary meeting of the council held on the 19th of July, 2021. Do I have a seconder to the minutes? Councillor Khan, thank you. Is that agreed? Thank you very much indeed. Item four, on the agenda, new partners update. I understand that we have no contributions to item number four. Item number five, announcements by the chair. I wish to make the following announcements. I wish to pass on the council's condolences 
the family of George Davison, Pearly King of Newham, who passed away in July, having held the title for more than 40 years. A memorial service at St. Paul's Covent Garden will be held on the 12th of October on behalf of the Pearly Kings. I attended the reopening of the Bank of India on High Street North on the 5th of August in my role as Chair of Council. And I also attended the Community Awards in West Ham on the 19th of August. These awards were instrumental with Councillor Mumtaz Khan, Umesh Desai, and the Mayor, I'm sorry, and the MP for Isan Steve Thames is also in attendance. They want to thank councillors who nominated residents for the awards and to thank those that receive awards for the work in which they have done in providing services and food parcels for residents of Neon who were in destitute. And I'd also like to thank the MP Stephen Tins for attending. Item number five on the agenda. Announcements by the mayor. Can I ask the mayor if she has any announcements, please? Um, yes, Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Chair, and good evening, colleagues. I trust you all had an enjoyable summer and are keeping safe and well. Can I start by extending uh, my own thoughts on the passing of Jimmy Greaves, uh, a new legend, and extending condolences on behalf of the whole borough. Proudly from Manor Park, his stunning achievements on the pitch will be remembered by millions. We have truly lost a giant who will never be forgotten. On to council things. Can I firstly uh, state, uh, given that we're back together, albeit at a social distance and still needing to be mindful of the risks of COVID-19, uh, it would be useful to talk about some council things. Can I say very clearly that my job and my overriding priority is to champion the interests of the people of Newham to listen and to address the issues of concerns to our residents. And I speak to Noom residents all the time, and I hear the issues of concern that we all share. And that is why a priority to clean up and improve our streets and our neighborhoods is paramount. And I have absolute trust and confidence I'm Mayor. in the cabinet member. Mayor for Environment, Sustainable Transport and Highways, Councillor James Asser Mayor, and his deputy, excuse me. Councillor Nilufa Jahan, in the stellar way in which they are progressing with that important agenda. Sorry, Chair, I appreciate that there's some noise, but I'm not distracted by it. But we want to close the windows, which might reduce some of the noise. Okay, just so yeah. that you know I'm not distracted by yeah, it. Yeah, okay. If I may, Chair, can I carry on? Yes, please do, yeah. Thank you very much. Mm. So I wanted to state very loudly and clearly, notwithstanding the noise that we can hear, the noise of a minority, that I have absolute confidence in the efforts and the excellence being pursued by Councillor James Asser and his deputy cabinet member, Nalufa Jahan, on all the actions that they are taking to ensuring that the air that our children breathe are clean, to ensuring that they're picking up on the issue of fly tipping. And as with all other priorities, we as an administration will continue to take action to make sure that we deal with those issues. The absolute focus for me as a mayor since being elected back in 2018 is to stand with and put the people of Noom first 
something that hadn't been done previously on the issues that really affect people's day-to-day -day lives, from dealing with fly tipping to addressing our housing crisis and in the way that we respond to the COVID pandemic. And you will hear me say more about the COVID-19 response in uh, my remarks later. And I want to absolutely make clear here and now that standing in the interests of the majority of Noom residents, of all Noom residents, is my job. And that is what I will always do to champion the interests of Noom residents. And that's what we did, as I mentioned, from the start of the pandemic last year. And I will be providing, as I mentioned, an update later on on the agenda in response to the Council's response to COVID-19. And we all know that the virus has not gone away. Uh, in my case, particularly last week, I was pinged and I had to isolate for a period until I was um, tested negative. And we need to always remain vigilant as cases continue to persist. So I urge everyone to please be safe and to be mindful of others around you. Moving on to some key issues coming up this week and in the coming month across the council and as an indication of the delivery that is being pursued by myself and my administration. So I talked earlier on cleaner streets and fly tipping. I'm absolutely acutely aware of the need to do all that we can to improve our streets and our public spaces, and especially tackle the scourge of fly tipping. When I travel around the borough myself, I know that this is an issue. And so I want to send a clear message that we are taking action to address this and taking on those who do not respect our borough because they dump rubbish and litter. We are accelerating our work to reduce the rubbish on our streets. Our Better Streets initiatives rolled out across the borough over the summer is proving successful. These involve targeted, targeting areas where this problem persists. A range of steps working with Keep Britain Tidy and our residents include action to target the 12 worst fly tip hotspots, working with young people to help them gain a greater understanding, putting up crime scene investigation tape at problem sites and chalk messaging, which highlights the financial cost involved of cleaning up this problem. These last two actions in particular have seen significant reductions, in some cases up to 75%. We've been out and about regularly, including at our Love Your Ward weekends. We are determined to take on those people who by dumping rubbish in this way, show scant regard for both our borough and the vast majority of people who do not behave in this way. We cannot afford to waste valuable public money to clean up the mess caused by those with no respect for our borough. Our message is clear. This kind of antisocial littering culture has no place in our borough. We have also brought our street cleansing teams back in house, reversing the previous privatization, which will strengthen what we do. And this is an issue that is close to the heart of both the cabinet lead for environment, sustainable transport and highways and his deputy as it is the entirety of the cabinet and it is our collective priority. The pride that the vast majority of us have in our borough and in our desire for it to be the best came out strongly during our first permanent standing citizen assembly which met during July. They discussed ideas and recommendations to both green and improve our streets and public spaces. I look forward to bringing those final proposals to next month's full council for members to hear. I'm also pleased to update full council on exciting proposals for new homes for Carbs' estate and the upcoming ballot of residents. As you all know, tackling the housing crisis is of course a central priority for this administration. And for the Carpenters' estate, this means giving back control to residents who have felt so badly let down in the past. When I stepped into office in 2018, 
I promise those residents that any future plans will involve them in both the process and the decision. Since then, we have worked collaboratively throughout, listening and working closely with those residents to develop plans to restore the estate, which will now be put to a vote. This will produce new high quality, sustainable, sustainably built and designed council homes, refurbishment of the blocks, better community facilities, and importantly, providing homes at rent levels that our people can afford. As promised, the final say will go to residents and the ballot will be open at the end of October. If they vote yes, we will go ahead with the plans. And this is a fundamentally important and exciting moment. And I look forward to the outcome of the ballot. Colleagues, still with housing in mind, can I share the great news that the Council has successfully secured funding of just over £91 million, that's £91 million, through the GLA Affordable Homes Programme to deliver a further 550 homes, genuinely affordable rent by 2026 for the residents of Newham. The first 150 homes will start in 2023, 2024 year, with a further 200 per year in the following years up to 2026. These will be delivered by the council and Popolo Homes and, is work, and work is already underway in preparation. This builds on top of the existing 107 million pounds that we, were allocated by the GLA towards the delivery of the manifesto pledge of a thousand homes already underway and built and builds also on the almost two billion pounds of money that we are investing in housing delivery in this borough. That's one billion pounds pounds on Carpenter's estate and one billion pounds allocated on remaining housing delivery through the Affordable Homes for Noon programme, our innovative airspace programme, and our acquisition strategy. It is all a reflection of our promise to deliver for the people of Newham across the issues that matter to them. And in this instance, around homes that our people can afford. We will also be working with local businesses to ensure that new residents benefit from the jobs that this housing building programme will create. Again, touching on housing, last week, myself and Councillor Shabar Mohammed, the Cabinet Lead for Housing Services, made clear that both of us, as with the rest of our Cabinet, Administration and the Council, stand with all those residents over the Cladden scandal and in support of the demonstration at Parliament last Thursday. Later on, Councillor Shaban will talk about this, but I can just underline that some four years after the Grenfell tragedy, it is not acceptable that thousands of homes remain unsafe, unsafe due to unsafe cladding. It is totally unacceptable that people face massive costs of fixing dangerous defects on the buildings that they live in because the government refuses to act to make the developers responsible pay. And whilst we are working hard to hold developers responsible, why is the government not doing the same? So I am urging the new Secretary of State, Michael Gove, to listen and take urgent action. And we will continue to stand and campaign with our residents on this issue. I'd also like to report on another exciting initiative being brought forward this week, Newham Sparks. It's a bold digital initiative and an anchor event for the prestigious London Tech Week that started today. Newham Sparks formally launches this Wednesday and it will take place at the Spectacular Factory Project, a former Tate and Lyle warehouse in the Royal Docks, which is, as many of you know, the burgeoning centre of the creative and digital sector in East London but here in Newham. Newham Sparks is our declaration to become a public sector data leader in local government by improving public service delivery through the use of data and technology, promoting responsible data use with trust and transparency and for the public good. 
Newman's Sparks is also a symbolic of our intention to harness partnerships to facilitate a sustainable data ecosystem locally that will support innovation, business growth and new jobs, including the development of new learning pathways, as well as training and opportunities to acquire new skills for our residents. Newman Sparks is also a statement of our ambition to unlock the value of data and digital and everything that we do as council to benefit our people, borough and place, to improve the environment, promote inclusive growth, as well as improving how the council works to deliver better for residents. We live in an age where data will become even more important as its increased proliferation will grow and expand economies worldwide, including here locally. And um, data will be leveraged and is being leveraged by many organizations and many governments to tackle a spectrum of social challenges that all of us face as humanity. And through Newham Sparks, we want Newham to be the location of the UK's data economy, but importantly and crucially, not at any cost. Whilst data may be the most valuable asset in the modern economy, and some have suggested it's a new oil, and through being its valuable asset as described, it will help enhance and accelerate growth through innovation. But we also recognize the data and the policy that pertains to the use of data its collection, issues of privacy, data ownership and competition and inclusion needs to change. And through Noom Sparks, our event that's taking place later this week, we want to, as a thought leader in local government, contribute to how public bodies enhance transparency, accountability and trust in the use of data in the real world. And Noom Sparks is our start in this effort. So please do keep an eye out for information that will be available from the council's website from this Wednesday. And just by way of giving colleagues a head up, as you know, the COP26 Climate Emergency Summit is some six weeks away. And I want to briefly report that in addition to building our action plan as we develop our roadmap to carbon zero by 2050, in the coming weeks, we'll be making a major announcement in relation to our contribution to COP26. In the meanwhile, the Council is getting on with our action plan through the Climate Emergency Task Force and, as mentioned, developing our roadmap. And we will be doubling our efforts in key areas, specifically working with the business and education sector to create those new green jobs, a big focus on housing and our retrofit program and innovative new housing initiatives. And all of that will be uh, announced in the coming weeks. Finally, colleagues, I want to speak about our response to the plight of people fleeing Afghanistan. Like many of you, I have been horrified at the events unfolding there, hearing from residents concerned for family members some of those I was in touch with had themselves been asylum seekers through previous periods of settlement from Afghanistan, British violence. During August, we worked with local MPs uh, offices to ensure that these cases were heard by government during that awful period of evacuations. And I stand here to say that we stand here ready to support the resettlement of humanitarian refugees. And I am proud to let colleagues know this evening that we will be accepting, in the first instance, 10 refugee families as part of the Afghan resettlement programme, who will be, no doubt, a welcome part of our community. Our officers are speaking to the voluntary community and faith sectors about plans to ensure these families are truly supported and welcomed. Of course, the government's response falls well short of what is needed, and we will continue to press for more to be done and for proper financial support. And Chair, that concludes my announcements this evening. Thank you. Um, thank you very much indeed, Mayor. 
item seven on your agenda pack. Any announcements by the acting chief executive? Can I ask the acting chief executive if she has any announcements, please? Thank you, Chair, no announcements. Thank you. Item eight, any updates by cabinet members, deputy cabinet members or commissioners? Any member of the cabinet, deputy cabinet member or commissioner who wishes to update council will be allowed to speak for up to three minutes. There shall be no debate or questions allowed. Does any member of the cabinet, deputy cabinet member or commissioner wish to speak? Councillor Mohammed, thank you. Hi everyone. For four for four years, on from the terrible terrible tragedy at Brent, uh, Grenfell Tower, far too many people, far too many of our people still live in fear and anxiety about a fire in their homes. This is a national scandal on an unprecedented scale. Here in Newham, we are doing everything we can we can to identify, remove, and repair dangerous cladding from our blocks. This council stands with residents affected by these vital costly repairs. Since the full council motion was passed in March, we have held uh, task and, and scrutiny sessions and a number of resident engagement public sessions to speak directly to people affected by the cladding scandal and other measures like our unique licensing system have put us in a good position to work with landlords, freeholders and developers on removing cladding in privately owned tall blocks over 18 metres. I'm pleased to say that our progress has been good. We have now removed all ACM cladding from all council tall blocks. We are waiting for gov the government to agree to fund work on remaining tall blocks to remove other and unsafe cladding and improve a range of other fire safety measures. Yet I have known that from that this is not fast enough for the residents who still live in fear. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we do not hold all the levers to solving this problem. And the government failure to act is creating another layer of crisis on top of, a, of the initial scandal. One that is hurting residents, leaseholders, and councils financially. Our partners at the, at the end our, scand end our uh, cladding scandal campaign have estimated that the safe removal of all dangerous cladding in England will cost 15 billion pounds. Yet the government has so far pledged a little under 3 billion. On the one hand, individual leaseholders are facing tens and thousands of pounds in bills and nearly one in four reports having thoughts about self-harm or suicide because of the strain. Many of our, many are also having to foot the bills for waking watches, patrols, and going to bed fearing the worst that could happen in the middle of the night. On the one hand, the UK's top five developers have made 10 billion pounds in profit since Grenfell. All this to fix deadly defects that could could never existed in the first place. This is an absolute national scandal, and it is our. Uh, it, and as your lead member for housing, I want you to know that I will be holding the government to account. In this borough, this council is doing everything we can to hold developers to account. Why isn't the government doing the same? Newham Council promises to do four things: stand with residents. Firstly, I will be writing to the Secretary of State to make sure that make sure he is aware of the difficulties we are facing and call upon him to provide new kinds of support, such as allowing us to overrule freeholders that are dodging responsibility to complete the necessary, necessary work up front and, in, and the bill, build them afterwards. Secondly, the building safety funds needs to become more transparent 
accessible to those of us on the front line. We need better information about how many blocks need repairs, how many bids are in progress and how many more money can, can be awarded. Thirdly, we need, we need the powers to fund and be able to deal with the knock-on crisis and, and the inaction that it has caused, such as providing in a, a, a adequate health, uh, mental health support for residents, addressing other interim measures like waking watches in the current climate of financial uncertainty. The council simply cannot absorb the costs that would hurt our most vulnerable residents by limiting what we can spend on other life-saving programmes. First, finally, I want to ensure all our residents that, that I remain 100% committed to supporting the many campaign groups who are speaking who are speaking up for the victims affected by residents, like those at End Our Cladding Scandal. We stand by you. Together with my officer colleagues, I'll, I will be focusing on communications to make sure that our residents get better, better updates for all our work and understand how we are acting to keep them safe. Where we cannot take a little action, we will make sure that residents know how we are defending them by holding the government and others to account. As the end, end us cladding scandal campaigners say, fire will, will not wait, neither will we. Thank you. Are there any further updates? Um, thank you very much indeed. Item number nine, overview and scrutiny committee update on work programs on future commissions. I call upon Councillor Anthony Macalmont, as chair of the overview and scrutiny committee. Do you have anything to say with regard to the board governance, scrutiny topics, or overview and scrutiny? If so, you have up to five minutes. Councillor Macalmont. Thank you, Chair. The Overview and Scrutiny Work Program has been adopted and work has already commenced. As you will see, there's a full set of Overview and Scrutiny meetings in the coming weeks. There are also in-depth reviews taking place through the activities of two separate commissions, namely one, is on the removal of combustible cladding for residential properties. And my colleague um, just um, speaking passionately about the same subject. And another, looking at the relationship between black boys and the borough. Both will continue to take evidence into the autumn and winter of this year, as the Black Boys Scrutiny Commission is aiming to report with recommendation early 2022. As is usual practice at this time of the year, we are also convening the Budget Working Commission to scrutinize the budget as we do every year. Its membership will be agreed on Thursday and it will have its first look at the overall position of the current budget on October 6th. Its work will conclude in its report being presented to the mayor and our cabinet in February of 2022. We, will, we continue to strengthen and build up scrutiny and in line with the provisions in the scrutiny executive agreement agreed in May of this year at the AGM, the current focus is especially strong on bringing external independent rigor to some of the commissions. We have just completed an interview process for independent co-optees to the overview and scrutiny committee. In addition, and having successfully piloted this approach last year, we have two independent co-optees joining the budget working commission. One is from the Institute of Fiscal Studies, 
as the other has again come from the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy. And I want to take this opportunity to thank them in particular for their ongoing support two years in a row. And finally, Chair, we have two independent cooperatives joining the Black Boys Scrutiny Commission. So a total of six independent cooperatives, certainly the force for scrutiny. And a big thank you to you all, colleagues, for your participation in the work of scrutiny, either through your role as scrutiny, um, your role on scrutiny commissions or as executive members for engaging with us. And we have certainly considered, and we have a carefully considered work, full work program to deliver before the next year's AGM. And I know I and my colleagues can continue to depend on your full support for the crucial function of scrutiny. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Members of Council, do you have any questions to the Overview Scrutiny Report? If so, you have up to five minutes. Any questions to Councillor McAlmo? Thank you very much, Councillor McAlmo. I think you got off lightly there. <laughs> yes, oh, sorry, Councillor Wilson. Uh, behind you on the screen was Councillor Daniel Blaney indicating. I presume that we can take questions even though people are remote from this meeting. There was a question from Councillor Blaney um, to the Chair of the Review and Scrutiny um, Committee. I think that question was, was replied to and circulated to all members of the Council. So I think that is as far as we can go on that one. Who has a hand? Sorry, up? Chair, I want to come Just, back because, okay. uh, you know, that reply was not in the public domain. And the whole point of this Council meeting is it's in the public domain. Whether, and Councillor Blaney, I think, is still indicating. So, you know, I don't know, I, I, I don't see the constitutional grounds on which we're refusing somebody who is may, may be remote. It may be that we may not want the question to be asked, but I'd rather it was asked in public because it was given a few notice. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to explain, since the um, removal, removal of the allowance for remote participation in meetings, only members in the room can formally participate in the meeting, which would extend to the asking of questions of um, the Chair of Overview and Scrutiny in this situation. We've obviously made an allowance to allow people to contribute to debates in the past, but not anything further than that. I think the Chair was trying to point out that this matter has that the council McCalmont has sought to address this point, um, but we can't really take it any further beyond that. Uh, we, we all appreciate the frustration of the kind of mishmash of rules. Oh, good. Point of order, Councillor Clark. I, I can't hear you. Could you use one of the microphones, please? Just a query, uh, Chair. You said in your uh, response uh, to Councillor Wilson that all members had received a response uh, from the uh, email that uh, Daniel Blaney had sent uh, to, to, to the respected uh, member. I, I certainly haven't seen that, and the people I'm sitting with have not seen that response. So I, I wonder if that was an accurate uh, report that you, you gave earlier on. Maybe you thought it was issued, but... A number of us certainly have not seen that response. Thank you. Thank you. Possibly Councillor McCormick can ask Councillor McCormick. Yeah, could you reply please, Councillor McCormick? Um, thank you once again, I'm Chair. Um, Councillor Clark, I have sent a response to Councillor Blaney and I've sent it to all members of the Council. And that would have been just before five o'clock or so. I have a 
I have in my hands um, a copy of what I sent out, a printout of it. I'm saying here is 1645. So I'm sorry if you haven't received it, but it's been sent to our members of the council. I've sent a response to you. Councillor Blaney has um, submitted a question. It's not on the order paper, but he was kind enough to have served me advance notice of a question he intend to put had he been here. Um, the chair and the monitoring officer has already given an explanation. I don't think I am at liberty to go against that. But I have been helpful in terms of I'm submitting my response to Councillor Blaney and I've shared it with colleagues. So you can read it. If you haven't seen it yet, um, I'm sure it's going to make good bedtime reading for you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Clark, through the chair, please. Thank you. Um, can I call on Councillor Pepiat, Reverend Pepiat, please? Uh, sorry, just to uh, Councillor McCarmon. Um, the, the question is raised about the Councillor Blaney quite rightly accesses the problem about this mixed mode that we're having uh, as council. And I'm just wondering, when are you going to look into the fact that uh, there is no criteria about how we get out of this way of meeting? Uh, I've raised it with you before in terms of public access. Uh, but isn't it a time that scrutiny looked into the fact that there's no way of getting out of this particular way of uh, accessing council meetings uh, because it's up to the officers, as they've explained to me, to make the decision about public access, about members' access to meetings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So isn't it time that you as scrutiny took on your responsibilities and actually looked into this and tried to examine officers about how we get out of this situation that's unfortunate for Councillor Blaney because he can't, can't ask a supplementary question? Okay. Thank you, Councillor Pepiad. I take it that you are asking me to put it on one of our uh, agendas to deal with this issue. If that's the case, I will gladly um, put it to um, the chairs and put it on the agenda. Thank you for your suggestion. I think it is the suggestions to do that. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, thank you very much for that. Item number 10 on your agenda, um, deputations. There were no requests made to the chief executive for the staging of a deputation at this evening's meeting. Item 11, and petitions. Does any member have a petition they wish to present to council? Council Pepe yeah. Thank you, uh, Chair. As I'm offering helpful suggestions, I'm gonna offer another helpful suggestion in, a, in the form of a petition. Uh, this is the helpful suggestion that we don't close uh, the city farm that's been uh, around for 40 years, and I've certainly experienced many children using the city farm. Uh, there is a petition for nearly 6,000 uh, people who have signed the petition. It's, it's a wonderful uh, thing on the front with a, a children's drawing, which is great. It has chickens and it has goats in it. Um, the problem with the uh, consultation is that uh, Councillor Assa has just said there will be an animal offer. That could be an, a budgerigar. Uh, we want a bit bigger than a budgerigar, and there is no specific about how you're going to get a, a city farm back in its uh, place. So there wasn't proper consultation, as we see it, on this matter. It was issued and only found out through a scrutiny commission at the end of July, and the uh, decision was making by cabinet at the beginning of September. Most of the people who use City Farm are the children of the borough. They were on summer holidays at that time. Uh, the parents, some of which are here today, um, were concerned that they weren't consulted properly on this matter. And I hope that uh, we did lobby to try and get a further time for consultation so that we could actually get a proper offer into the official consultation that Councillor Assa has said that will go ahead. Uh, the other problem, of course, is the impact on SEND children, uh, and that doesn't seem to be part of things, or the exploration of other funding opportunities to actually in make sure the city farm could continue. So I'm presenting this petition, a wonderful picture on the front, done by the children of Newham, to save city farm. It's got nearly 6,000 signatures, and I present it to officers. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much indeed. I think one would say that's well appreciated. Would you say so? Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, any more petitions? Thank you very much indeed. Um, I see, Councillor Pepiat, that you've already handed your petition to the officer. Is that right? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Item number 12, members' questions. There are four questions this evening. Two have been received from Councillor Osse and two from Councillor Thakurpura. Question one from Councillor Osse to Councillor Mohammed. Councillor Osse, do you have a supplementary question based on the answer received in relation to your question? No, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Councillor Osse. Is there a second question? Sorry, there's another bit of paper here. Just a minute. Right, yeah. Question two is also from Councillor Osei to Councillor Mohammed. Councillor Osei, do you have your supplementary question based on the answer received in relation to your question? Thank you very much indeed. Do you wish to respond? Councillor Say? Are you quite happy with that answer? You're quite happy with that answer. Thank you very much indeed. Question number three from Councillor Thakipurali to Councillor Asa. Councillor Thakipurali, do you have a supplementary question based on the answer received in relation to your question? You do? Okay. Thank you, Chair, for letting me to ask a supplementary question based on the answers given by our reputed cabinet member, Councillor Asher. Uh, thank you very much for Councillor uh, James Asher. He is one of the very hardworking cabinet member. I appreciate his hard work, but though I'm not happy with the answers he was given here. So, because he was, uh, first of all, I want to correct him um, the, the, the wheelie bin since you issued instead of orange bags. It was not last year, at least uh, in my knowledge, it's around more than uh, six, seven years ago. Because at my home, I got the wheelie bin and around six, seven years ago. And I don't understand why he's not updated about that knowledge. The second thing is about. Uh, his uh, engagement with the public uh, knowledge about the how to educate uh, community and public uh, regarding the recycle. And if we have passed the climate emergency in 2019. I wonder why we haven't taken such an action uh, so far. Uh, because uh, uh, the bin issued at my home say, uh, uh, around six, seven years ago, there was a sticker on it, what we can uh, um, recycle on it. And that have gone about years ago, uh, couldn't read about. And you know that in our borough, it's a hub for the people coming in to live uh, every year, thousands, not if not uh, hundreds. So. These people are coming and living in our border. They don't know why these two believe bins are here. So because the new resident and the older resident who doesn't know about, and then according to your answer, there are increased number of people knows and engaged about the, the importance of the recycling, but they were not educated properly. And at their home, there goes two bins in the two colored and there is no knowledge about what purpose it is. So we have to uh, frequently uh, communicate what things goes and what things not going in it. And so the basic purpose of the really orange bins are failing. And we are, uh, that's my question, it's not fit for purpose because we're spending money on it and that's not delivering the value for money. That's my, uh, the answer, but it didn't reflect in it here. But, and I welcome your suggestion that we're going to be uh, re collect the recycle bin uh, weekly rather than the toys, what we do, fortunately, 
what we are doing currently. Uh, that's my uh, uh, submission, uh, uh, Councillor uh, James Sasha, and thank you, Chair, for that. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Thakur Thurali. Councillor Asa, do you wish to respond? Thank you. Assume oh, there we are. Um, so thank you, Councillor. I think to, to, my apologies to start with, because I think there was some misunderstanding of the original intention of your question about the nature of uh, the recycling bins, which is why we put in there that uh, we'd done a pilot looking at, as part of the pilot about extension of recycling, uh, we'd looked at whether bags or bins were more effective because your, your question around uh, value for money is what I, I think we understood. I get the point you're now making, which is in relation to the age of the bins and the necessary understanding of what can go in them. Um, we are, as I've put in the answer, doing an expansion of the amount of materials and the types of materials that can go in. That will come with various amounts of communications and education materials, and that will also include the need to update some of the, the information that goes on the bins, which I think is the point you're making. Um, where bins are uh, broken or need replacing, residents can, we do provide those to residents, and if there are particular problems in his ward, I'm happy to pick those up with him. So uh, we're making further announcements on recycling uh, next month in, in council, which I think will address a number of the questions he has raised but we are picking this up we are expanding the range of stuff we're doing there are some issue, other issues that relate to national problems in terms of um, waste collection which other boroughs are going through but we are doing an expansion and that will include some of the issues he's raised around uh, information so i uh, i'm happy to pick that up with him separately but I, he will i think he will be pleased with what we'll be bringing forward in the next few weeks and couple of months thank you very much Question number four, again, from Councillor Tessa Guparali. The response was published um, in the, on the agenda. Councillor Tessa Guparali, do you have a supplementary question to Councillor Asa? Thank you, Chair, for letting me to ask a supplementary question based on the answers given by the Councillor James Asa. Uh, the answer, I'm more or less satisfied with the answer, but the question, uh, the, it is not still addressing the issues I can say, uh, raise uh, here, uh, because I'm crossing every day, toys at least uh, on the high street, not uh, particularly on the school running times. And I've been heckled by one of the ward residents, it's not belongs to my ward, though he was uh, out uh, 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 taking out his frustration on the, uh, the council measurements on these issues. And that's why my question is that it is, we need to act very swiftly and it should be visible to the public. I can't see any on the environment offices on the peak time on the high street, no. So that's, uh, uh, that's why we need to take it somewhat very seriously about imposing the um, uh, enforcement actions on this, uh, the e-scooter users at least on the high street, no. And the other thing is I need to uh, suggest we should we should uh, take a council resolution on this regarding to the uh, the uh, central government uh, to pass a, a statute regarding this very urgently because we are waiting for something to happen that we cannot be uh, wait for something to happen to take an action so that's my submission on this thank you thank you very much council Asa, would you like to respond please Yeah, I mean, uh, to, oh, are we on? Uh, to pick this up, I mean, I think as, as I've outlined, there are, there are lots of difficulties with this. The, the problem of these scooters has um, exploded in the last couple of years. Um, the problem is they're legal to buy, but they're not legal to use either on the roads or the pavements or on cycle lanes. Only the police at the moment have enforcement powers on that. And obviously, they're stretched in terms of the, the explosion of this. I think to be fair to many of the users, I suspect lots of them don't know the legalities around that because they're probably not told when they bought them. There is a... Um, trial going on with the Department of Transport and Transport for London around e-scooter hire, which we've not opted in. We're looking very carefully at the options on the boroughs that have opted into that. We're also talking to boroughs who've not opted in and look at some policy measures. Ultimately, the government are going to have to make a decision because this isn't just a London problem. It's a nationwide. I was in other cities the other day where they've also gone some uh, down the hire route and frankly, they are everywhere on the road, the pavement. Um, 
a decision is going to have to be made on this, but it, it caused great difficulty. I mean, I've spoken to, we've been talking about this across London councils. We've been talking to this with TfL. I've met with some of the disability charities around this. It is an extremely difficult one. It's a bit like putting toothpaste back in the tube to solve the problem, but we're going to need some changes in the law and changes in enforcement from uh, central government and uh, City Hall are working on that. So hopefully the trial will bring some stuff forward, but it's extremely difficult at the moment. And I know it's causing concerns for lots of people. So we keep talking to the police. And I believe the police are now doing some measures measures on this um, and hopefully some education will come out of that as well in terms of people using them responsibly but ultimately they are illegal except on private land. Thank you very much Councillor Moving to item 13 on the agenda, questions by the public. We have received 16 questions from members of the public. The questions submitted and the answers are those which appear in tonight which appears in tonight's order paper. The answers will be emailed to the questionnaires and will appear in the minutes of this meeting. On the 16 questions received, 10 relate to Newham City Farm, and these have been responded to as one. Can I ask, is there any member of the public who has a question appearing in the order paper wishes to read it out? There's no one, is there? Okay. Would you like to come to the mic, please? Um, I'm Alison McLucas, I'm a resident of Beckton and a uh, Newham teacher. And my questions um, are, let me just find my questions. Has the council conducted an impact assessment on the closure of Newham City Farm for people with SEND on mental health and well-being and other sections of the community, including schools? Did schools even know um, before making a proposal to close um, Newham City Farm? And number 13, has, council, has the council fully investigated all funding possibilities to maintain a community farm in Newham? It says it has sought sponsorship. Um, where is the evidence of that, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I ask, is there any member of the public who has a question appearing in the order paper and wishes to read it out? Um, there's no one here for that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councillor Asla, do you have anything further to add to the question? If I may, Chair, I'd like to pick up on all the um, questions relating to the farm, especially given there's a petition as well. I, I promise I won't exceed my time. Um, basically, I think what I would like to obviously do, we've gone through, um, responded to them as one. I would also refer people to the, the cabinet paper and to the, the, the online debate, which we had last week. I have met with um, the uh, campaigners, some of whom are here today, and we had a deputation from them at the cabinet meeting. I'd like to repeat some of what I said at the cabinet meeting, which was frankly to apologize for the fact we've reached this point. And I am sorry about that. I am very sorry. And I said sorry at the cabinet meeting and I repeat that now. This is not a situation we should have been found ourselves in. And I am extremely sorry we've got to this point. It was ex it's been an extremely difficult period and it's not a decision I wanted to make. The process we started with this was to look to improve the farm. The difficulties, some of which have been outlined publicly, some of which can't, are things we just simply couldn't ignore. We've been through a process with this, but what we have now promised, um, and we will continue to meet with the campaigners who, who are here and others, and I've started to receive kind of uh, contacts from others, is that we will meet, continue to meet with people and community to discuss the way forward. There is a master plan going forward, which will be properly consulted on, which will go out widely. We've made a promise to bring that back in February to cabinet, but there will be stuff appearing before Christmas. And we've started that project plan. We will work with the groups that have approached us. We've got other people already contacting us with ideas, and we're going to make this work by bringing the community into this and bringing a wider uh, range of, of things in. 
it was mentioned earlier around the animal officer offer. That is the, the, the wording that came out of the scrutiny recommendation. What we want to do is get people to bring in ideas of what they would like to see. That could be a new farm, that could be bringing in um, external charities and welfare groups and things like equestrian centres who may be able to bring things in. It will certainly be more than a budgerigar. Um, we wouldn't be that ridiculous. Um, but what we will certainly be doing is consulting widely and finding what else. And SEND will be an important part of that. And uh, Councillor Lee Park. Parkway's department will be involved in that too, and she made that clear at, um, at, at Cabinet. It's a huge part of what we can do, and that area will provide a huge opportunity to improve our SEND provision for children and outdoor play, um, and I'm very aware of the situation. So I understand the difficulties, I understand why people are upset. Um, I was particularly unhappy when we got to this point. It's been a long time coming, unfortunately, and we hadn't we hadn't been on top of it. And we should have been. It shouldn't have got to this point, and lessons will be learned. But I will continue to engage uh, with the campaigners and the people who have contacted me and, and have further conversations. And we the, we will make something decent out of this. I promise. And and I very much heard. And just to finish, I've seen the petition. I think it's very well worded. I think it's helpfully worded, and I think we can pick up on that. So. Uh, I stand here as a guarantee that this will continue to be public open space and we will work with them to develop what animal provision we can along with the same provision and other play facilities. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Lassie. Right, moving to item 14, species from members. There are no species from members this evening. Thank you. So moving on to the next item, which is item 15. Uh, motions, again, no motions received for this evening. Item number 16, COVID pandemic update. Can I ask Mayor Fiaz to move the recommendations in report? Please note, you have up to five minutes. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, colleagues, um, I'm really pleased to introduce this report. And um, before I do, I wanted to convey my heartfelt thanks, appreciation, for all members of Newham Council staff uh, across all tiers and levels, as well as for the resident community who mobilised in their volunteering efforts to help in the collective effort as we responded to the seismic public health emergency that we were faced with last March none of us in our lifetimes have been exposed or experienced something of such great magnitude, and it is still with us. This report is a report that sets out the council's COVID-19 response to the pandemic. It sets out how uh, we responded to date, uh, in collaboration with our partners, be they uh, local residents, be they our health partners, be they the uh, absolutely heroic efforts on part of our voluntary and community sector. It also sets out uh, how we will be responding to the next stage of the pandemic with all that that entails, both the economic and social impact, the implications of long COVID, and the variety of challenges that lie ahead as we embark on recovery. The last report on COVID-19 response was to Cabinet back in May 2020. It is important that as a council, as an administration in line with our good governance arrangements, our transparency, that we provide this update uh, as mentioned, COVID-19 has indelibly impacted and touched every aspect of our lives and our work as a council. And as you will all be aware, the pandemic is far from over, so we really do need to make sure that we are in a position to continue supporting our residents and businesses through what is expected to be a very challenging winter notwithstanding the booster vaccination programme that will be commencing imminently because COVID-19 is something that we uh, are grappling with in terms of its trajectory and uh, potential 
for mutation in terms of uh, new strands and variants. So uh, again, just really to reiterate, I am immensely proud of how we responded as a borough, as a people, as a community to this biggest health emergency to face us in this country and the world for over a century. And as you all are aware, because of the various information that we published, the commentary that I made uh, and drawing extended periods in quite de uh, depth and detail, Newham has been particularly hard hit across a range of uh, issues and disproportionately so in terms of case rates, numbers of deaths and wider economic and social impacts. The report outlines the campaigning priorities that we will focus on to tackle long-standing disadvantage inequalities exposed by COVID-19, which we had commenced with from May 2018 under the auspices of our community wealth building agenda and also our inclusive economy strategies. If we do not deal with the systemic issues of poverty and inequality, be that race inequality, gender inequality, and all the other inequalities that impact some of our most marginalized communities living here, we will be redundant as a political class in this country and we will just continue to accelerate levels of uh, mistrust between uh, politics and the people. And uh, as we tackle these uh, long-standing issues of disadvantage and inequality through our recovery mission, as iterated uh, through the Towards a Better New and Recovery strategy, we will be able to uh, accelerate on our housing delivery because having a home that is secure, uh, that is well-designed, that is sustainable, that isn't uh, fraught with issues of condensation is as much a health and poverty is issue as it is having a roof over your head issue. As we continue promoting employment rights and fair play, that is much of a social justice and economic justice issue against the backdrop of a borough where pre-COVID we had up to 36 thousand of our residents not even being paid the uh, national minimum wage legally required let alone the London living wage and we must always be vigilant as to the um, intent on part of some abusive employers to um, denigrate employment rights and fair play and the COVID-19 campaigning priorities going forward are all about ensuring that we meet our recovery missions, particularly as it pertains to jobs for our people. We had the highest number of residents on furlough. Furlough is going to be ending. We have to brace ourselves for, with an increase in unemployment, notwithstanding what the national figures have recently stated, and that may well be a COVID recovery bounce, but we've always got to be prepared for the mid and long term. And what that means for us as a borough is transitioning in a just way to the green economy of the future that will create those high skilled highway jobs for our people in the new economy. In the report, and I'll be quickly ending for apologies, um, we will be doing this as highlighted in the report through the Towards a Better New and Recovery Strategy and Action Plan. But in addition, what's really crucial uh, in this report is the importance of the feedback and the learning that we will be deriving from a 360 degree review uh, of the council's response because it is important that we build on what has gone well, but also learn lessons from what we could improve on. I must add colleagues that there have been members of council that have highlighted the substantial impact that the pandemic has had 
on accelerating our introduction of green and active transport measures in the borough. Uh, this is not included in the published report, but I am hoping um, that in the coming weeks uh, and certainly at next month's council, we can provide an additional report to set that out. Uh, but I really wanted to note this uh, matter or that area uh, this evening, in particular, the introduction of low traffic neighbourhoods and other traffic calming measures will continue to bring benefits for our residents beyond the pandemic. As I mentioned, we are doing this to ensure that the young people that we love and that we hold dear to our hearts and are precious to us and are reflective of our future have clean air that they can breathe. We are a borough where we have the highest number of hospital admissions of young children around and under the age of 12, four and a half thousand each year. That is the reason why we are introducing these measures and it is to be welcomed that COVID-19 enabled us to accelerate on reducing emissions, making our roads safer, improving the ability of our residents to be able to walk, improving air quality and encouraging more active transport methods like cycling and walking. The report also covers the impact of COVID-19 on children and adolescent mental health services, youth empowerment and workforce well-being. And officers will be providing further details and figures to members on those topics. So I commend this report and related appendices to Cabinet for noting. Members will also recall that scrutiny colleagues presented their report and findings from the work that they did to scrutinise the Council's response to the COVID-19 pandemic at the Cabinet meeting in July. This report now presents the executive's response to those recommendations and builds on the detailed update on the Council's overall response to the pandemic that we have discussed elsewhere on the agenda. I want to commend the scrutiny task and the finish on COVID-19 and its chair that led that task and finish COVID-19 scrutiny. It was very thorough and focused, particularly on the impact of COVID on our communities and how our response supported residents, businesses and wider communities to get through the pandemic. They have made some really helpful recommendations around improving our communications and engagement work. And for that, I am thankful. And our, it is always important to improve our communications and our engagement work in a whole gamut and spectrum of issues from providing support to parents, schools and families and focusing our attention and our work on the most vulnerable of our residents, as well as understanding the impact of changes to government schemes such as furlough. The executive response highlights where we are already taking action in these areas and sets out other actions that are planned I agree there are always lessons to be learned and we have carried out a 360 degree review of the council response precisely for that reason to inform a full evaluation and to ensure that as we transform as a council become better be responsive to our residents, we are also a learning organization. However, in a number of areas we've been we have been acknowledged as a le as leading the way nationally particularly in our community response. And we should never ever forget that. We should always be proud. As um, the lead member for the council's COVID-19 response in the context of the emergency situation that we found ourselves in, my corresponding lead officer is Althea Loderick as chief executive. The lead director who has coordinated the response is Jessica Crow, and Jessica is also here this evening to answer any questions. Thank you, Chair and colleagues. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, Councillor Ali to second. Okay. Um, do you want to speak or reserve your right to speak? Okay, thank you. Firstly, can I thank Mayor for acknowledging the excellent work that's been done by the officers, our health partners, and indeed our community. And I think as Mayor said, uh, the, the role of our community voluntary sector, faith sector has been tremendously important in tackling the big challenges we faced. Every challenge brings an opportunity. And I think this is a prime example. 
our network of 500 plus community health champion, an initiative this council brought into being, was copied by the prime minister and indeed asked other local authorities to, to actually implement that with the funding when we didn't get that. Secondly, our isolation support to the people who were affected by this deadly pandemic is also a, an initiative of our own. But without the role of our community, our voluntary sector, faith sector, and indeed our partners, this has been, would have been a very, very difficult challenge. We have suffered disproportionately high in terms of numbers, it's particularly in the first phase, but we managed the situation through multifaceted approach, which everybody contributed. And I think you as members have played a great leadership role in, in supporting our communities, in our diverse communities and supporting the challenges that we had faced collectively. But the challenge is still here. COVID is here to stay. Its long-term impact is going to be here for many, many years, as you may read, may have read in the report. But it is our job to make sure that we encourage as many people as possible to go for vaccination if they haven't had one, and if they qualify for the booster, do that as well. Because these issues faced by COVID, the long COVID is yet to be established in terms of its, its wider impact. But as Mayor said, the economic impact, the poverty, the, the social aspects, the mental health, there's so many aspects which have been brought onto us during this period. But on the positive side, can you imagine us being in this kind of meeting, you know, two years ago, the, the intervention of IT, the way things have moved on, has positively helped us to do things better. 30 but seconds, Council. I shall be finishing very shortly here. I think I would like to pay private tribute to, to the scrutiny task and finish group, particularly Council Daniel Ipoke and the members of the scrutiny panel there, who have done extremely hard work to bring back recommendations which we have kind of have agreed and supported. And I thank you all member. And I hope that we can all continue to play our role in our community to make sure that we can safeguard our community completely as much as we can. Thank you, Jane. And I second this with those words. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. We now move to the debate. Does any member wish to speak? I see Councillor Wilson is waving his hand. Councillor Wilson. Up to three minutes, Councillor Wilson. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I won't take that long. I mean, the Mayor has already highlighted that their response will be coming in a future report. Just to um, uh, underline her and Councillor Ali's comments, obviously in the youngest borough in the UK in terms of our demographic, my concern was uh, in another place was that we do get um, some more data on how we're working in partnership with the East London Foundation Health Trust mental health support teams, because as both Councillor Ali and the Mayor have indicated, the longer term effects on our young people need to be monitored. We have obviously a well-being power, but also to work with our health partners. And also I did mention in another place about uh, after the lifting of restrictions, the number of 18 under 18s are able to benefit from in-person um, contact in terms of the youth empowerment service and I think both of those are really good initiatives and my final comment chair you'll be pleased to know I'm being very brief as usual is that uh, we do need to look at all of our working practices and workforce well-being because we have a duty of care all of us not just as corporate parents to the young people but all the young people and particularly our hard-working staff to work out I think paragraph 615 there's a continuing need to respond agilely to service pressures and redeploy staff as required and I pay tribute as along with my other colleagues to the hard-working staff of our borough but also the councillors and voluntary sectors have already been mentioned but thanks for the opportunity to just put that in thank you thank you very much councillor any other member wanting to speak take that as a no then huh Mayor Fiaz, we'd like to respond, please. Um, Sorry, Councillor Blaine wants to speak. Oh, just one minute, please. Um, Councillor Blaney, on video. Councillor Blaney, would you like to speak? Can't hear him.
Councillor Blaney, could you hear us? There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to hear. Sure. Adrian, there's no reason we shouldn't. Councillor Blaney, could you wave your hand if you can hear us, please? Oh, you can hear us. Right, thank you. Um, is there any reason why we can't hear Councillor Blaney? Okay, Councillor Blaney, could you try saying something to see if we can hear you? I think you were muted just now. Hello? You can't hear my mic. Uh, Say what I'm yeah. But I don't think it but, is at this end. No, no. Yeah. We're having difficulties, Council Blaney. We can't hear you online and we can't hear you on the video. Yeah. Well, I wanted to see if somebody else would volunteer to unmute to see if it's some if it's a problem at their end or our end. I can I can see if you can hear yeah. me. Can you hear me? Yes. Right, Councillor Dascuto, I've asked to ask you if you can hear us and if you can, yeah, if I, we can hear you. Yeah, can you? Hello? I mean, I could hear Aisha just we now. We can't hear you either. Oh, um, oh. Still that we can hear each other. Meanings. I can hear Aisha, but I couldn't hear Daniel. I can hear Ruth as well, but I could not hear Daniel. Daniel, do you mind to uh, up your volume or something? That, that's going to Chowdhury. That's going to Chowdhury. Yes, now it seems like they can hear us. If we can just give us a minute, there seems we can hear it, hear the members speaking at the top table. So there's obviously some problem with the connection. Daniel, you might, you might need to return your uh, audio function, audio settings. Check your audio settings. Because we can't hear you either on Zoom. Hello. Yep. Speak the microphone look good. Yeah, yeah, I can I can hear you. We can hear you now, Daniel. Okay. I haven't done anything apart from do a check and it's fine. Briefly heard it. I tried them all, tried it this morning this afternoon. It worked. Sure, we can hear Daniel now on Zoom. Before we could not, now we can. Yeah. So meaning it should be okay now. Coming a bit late, I think. It's a bit loud. <laughs> okay, let me just see. Right. Uh, uh, Councillor Blaney, can you hear us now? Oh, I could always hear you. Can you All hear right. me? Yeah, I think we can hear you. Just have to moderate. <laughs> okay. Awfully, awfully sorry about that. Can you put your question, please? Okay. Well, I want to consider um, the Council's response to COVID-19 and its impact on democratic participation. Since the end of the emergency legislation, I've participated in audit and scrutiny meetings remotely and been able to ask questions on any agenda item I requested. Indeed, I stood in as chair of health scrutiny last week and I hope my facilitation... Thanks so many. Could you just pause a bit, please? I think we're still having problems. Could you just pause for one moment, please?
some kind of loop. That's, so I don't know. Just, just tell him to pause. So it's recording and then playing it a bit later. But it's very weird. <laughs> so it's probably best if nobody says anything. Yeah. Councillor Blaney, can you hear us? Yeah, hello. Carry on then. Okay, so um, as I was saying last week, um, I chaired a health scrutiny meeting with the hybrid model, and I hope my facilitation of questions from members joining remotely was lawful. I don't see why not. Newham's also had a hybrid call-in procedure during the pandemic, that was in August. Remote members asked valuable questions, uh, but much has been done by the executive during this period of the pandemic and more questions uh, need to be asked about them in public. Uh, when was the decision made to remove a charity from Stratford Circus, for example? I think it's something to do with a recording, isn't it? Yeah. Why at the call-in was it said to be March 2020 when there's no formal decision in the relevant cabinet papers? Why was scrutiny so tightly managed to prevent meaningful exploration of alternatives to the cabinet decision on procurement this summer? Why are these questions not allowed in public today? Why after months of success have the hybrid model had its practice changed for this meeting, appearing know. to hush up concern regarding Stratford Circus? Um, I hope in future we have some clarity and uh, correct involvement of um, all members of council to participate safely in our democratic processes. Thank you. I can do that, yeah. Can I, at, at this point, um, remind those who are viewing us on YouTube that we're having difficulties at the moment. So if they can bear with us, we'll try to see if we can sort out the problems. So we do apologize for that. Councillor Khan. Question or contribution? Karen. Microphone at the front, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm. Um, I, I have a quick question. Uh, may I ask 
The rate of uh, domestic abuse cases has gone up during this pandemic uh, period. Um, I'm Come closer, closer to the mic, closer to the mic. I'm, I'm worried it's gonna scream. Um, the rates of domestic abuse cases has gone up during the pandemic period. Um, I'm, I just want to make sure that it's always on the agenda uh, of this council. Uh, if Mayor could um, just elaborate on that. I'm not sure if you've heard me. Thank you. Could we go back to Council Blaney? Hello, can you hear me again? Councillor Blaney, can you hear us? Yeah. Right, you can hear us. He can't hear us. Yes. Mm. Uh, so it'll be on the YouTube recording, actually. Yes. I think we should better move on. Better move on. Okay, yeah. just apologise. Yeah. Just yeah, um, regretfully, we can't hear you, Councillor Blaney. So I think um, in the interest of proceeding, I think we have to bypass your contribution at this time and go back to the meeting live. So thank you very much. And we do apologize for the difficulty we've been having. Thank you very much. Any more contributions from the floor? Uh, Mayor Fiaz, you have the right to reply. We've got no guarantee. Would you like to reply, please? Because they don't know what the problem is. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, so just in response to Councillor Neil Wilson, um, thank you very much for um, re-emphasising the importance of our role as a council, but more importantly, as councillors in our duty to our young people, not least because of the corporate parenting responsibility that the council as an organisation, as a public entity holds, and actually our duty and our responsibilities as elected members and the impact of COVID-19, not on all of our young people, not just prominent groups, the most marginalised and minoritised young people cohorts that are in our borough. And it's definitely been something that we have bit paid real diligence to. Uh, in response to Councillor Mumtaz's rightful uh, drawing attention to the horror and the unacceptable behaviour uh, towards women and girls through its manifestation uh, of violence against women and girls, which even pre-pandemic reached crisis proportions. The uh, oversight that the council has um, uh, undertaken in that area has also been uh, characteristic of the diligence that you would expect and notwithstanding that, we are undertaking a huge amount of work to ensure that our domestic violence, violence against women and girls provision in the council is second to none. And we have undertaken phases of revision because we know that in uh, the context of Newham, with its spectrum of diversity, uh, domestic violence, violence against women, and girls takes many forms and that needs to be confronted in appropriate and effective ways that also take into account religious and cultural dynamics at play as well as the intersectionality of race as well as gender and that will be something that we will advance and go forward with and then if uh, if I may albeit I wasn't able to hear Councillor Blaney in his contributions to this paper, I did catch uh, matters pertaining to de the democratic deficit. Uh, and I look forward to receiving his comments in writing. And it's regretful that we've not been able to hear in this room his contributions, which uh, to reassure him will be valued. And across all three contributions, raised through the questions that members have posed 
I will make sure that at next month's meeting, an additional report comes forward to cover off issues as they pertain to violence against women and girls and domestic violence and the nature and feature of that during COVID-19 and what we will be doing as part of our recovery phrase. Um, uh, building on what we're doing in any case as a local authority, some additional assurance, Councillor Winston, in terms of the work that we've undertaken uh, pertaining to our looked after children and how that fits as part of that wider long term approach for all of our young people, just but just to also reassure we are absolutely unstinted in our focus on ensuring that regardless of what your circumstances are, where your background, uh, what your background is, and where you find yourself uh, in any particular juncture of your life journey. If you're a child and young person in this borough, yeah. we want to transform and make Newham the best place in the world for you to grow up. And then in response to Councillor Blaney, I look forward to your written uh, contribution or your contribution in writing if you could kindly send it to me by email and I'll make sure that the democratic deficit as I understood you wanted to refer to is covered off as appropriate in this subsequent report thank you colleagues and chair thank you very much Cindy um, before we move to vote I've been informed that Councillor Blaney could have been heard on YouTube uh, although we couldn't hear him here. So officers will circulate what Councillor Blaney was trying to present to the meeting. Okay, are you happy with that? Thank you very much. Um, we now move to the vote on item number 16. Only those members of councils physically present at this meeting would be able to vote. The recommendations are that the three reports contained in the appendices are noted. Is that recommendation agreed? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hands up. Wonderful. Anyone against? Um, that is noted. Actually carried. Item number 17, um, special urgency exemption from calling procedures decision. Can I ask Councillor Anthony McAlmont, Chair of the Review and Scrutiny Committee, to move the recommendations in the report? Please note you have up to five minutes. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, Chair, um, before the summer holidays, Overview and Scrutiny Committee um, received a request from Children and the Young People's um, Directorate to agree the special urgencies for the delivery of new holiday activities and food grant program. And Sarah, the cabinet member for the children and young people came before us, that is the chairs of um, the commissions um, and presented the case um, for this um, activity, why this activity should have um, or why we should give special, um, agree special urgency. Um, we've heard, we've asked questions and not to have granted um, or agree the special urgency would have meant depriving Newham's children from the holiday activities and the food, some of them so desperately needed. And obviously we, as councillors and chairs of reviews, uh, we are not in the business of depriving our young people from holidays, activities, and food, so we have granted it. I have nothing further to add, and therefore I ask council to note the report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a seconder to the report? Uh, councillor Daniel Lee Pathway, thank you very much. Would you like to speak, or you reserve the right to speak? Thank you very much. Uh, we now move to the debate. Any member? Councillor Sears, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, far be it me from, from me to correct Councillor Tony McCalmont, but actually it was, um, wasn't the responsibility of Children and Young People Services. It was actually the responsibility of Brighter Futures but, and we made that request together. Thank you. Any other member? Um, 
I think you should be happy about that. <laughs> right, any other member wish to speak? Councillor McAlmont, do you have the right to reply if you so wish? Thank you very much. Um, we will now move to the vote. Only for those members of council physically present at this meeting location. The recommendation is to note the special urgency and exemption from calling procedure decisions as detailed in report. Is the recommendation agreed? Agreed. Thank you. I think there's no objectives to that. Thank you very much indeed. Um, that is carried. Item 18 on the agenda, changes to the council constitution. As agreed earlier, we, this is deferred to another council meeting. Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Item 19, appointments. Are there any appointments to be made by the mayor who she wishes to announce today? Um, no, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Are there any appointments from the Chief Whip? Thank you very much indeed. No further business, could I therefore thank members for your contribution this evening. We seem to have got over the technical issues. 